So I smell cigar smoke, don't you, or something like that? Uh, yeah, okay. Mm. This is the Benedictine Monastery at Milk. Right now there's 30 monks that reside there. But there's also a school with 900 students. Milk Austria.
get the water from the subdanium. And so the rainwater was collected. And you can see um, there's another roof underneath. Mm -hmm. And so that was collected. And also to prevent the storm from This is the full extent of the Ama Prima. It's the only time I've been able to get the whole thing without another ship blocking the scene or something. This is on the Danube River. Yeah. Did you? between 400 meters up to 700 uh, meters high, meaning that the highest hill that you will see this afternoon, 700 meters means about 2,500 feet. The Danube of the Wachau Valley is about 35 kilometers long, meaning about 22 miles long and goes a little bit further downstream from Durnstein where we are going to stay overnight. Where's the kid of it later? And another person is coming. That's no problem. <coughs> <coughs>
third center needle here, and the green ones we parted uh, the trees and planted the vines so that you see left and right. So that uh, dates back to the year 800. In the medieval times, uh, the uh, vineyards were uh, um, more than uh, what you see now. It had about uh, 800 families owning uh, the vines. The smallest uh, property will be about uh, 10 uh, acres, and uh, the biggest one uh, near the town of Dunstein is uh, about 1,000 acres. About one third of uh, the um, the castle was built in the 12th century, but left in ruins after uh, the Swedish army passed uh, down the valley during the Thirty Years' War, 1618 to 1648. They were helping the Protestants uh, during the Protestant Catholic uh, religious war. So they stormed the castle of the current population of 1,700 nowadays. It was important in the medieval times as it was situated in the heart of the Bahau Valley, and the Köln rings uh, had their castle here. It was destroyed by the Swedish army in the 1630s, rebuilt again, and destroyed again by uh, the French troops of Napoleon when he came down the valley in 1803 and up the valley in 1809. Nowadays, Spitz is famous for the wine and the mountain that you see behind the town of Spitz is called the Mountain of the Thousand Buckets because it is said he used to rest before 1800, when they were pulling the boats up the river. says that uh, one winter the snow was uh, so high that the only place the rabbits in the region could uh, uh, hide was up on top of the uh, church. And uh, one day the snow melted so fast that the rabbits had no time to jump down. They stayed there and turned it.
left hand side and where you see lots of people standing just above them you see a little statue a man on the horse and a person next to him that a statue of the english king on his horse and next to him is his fightful menestrel blondel in front the bus, uh, you can see already this charming uh, town of Durnstein, population about 900, and right above the town on our left, all the way up on top of the hill, you can see the ruins where the English king was kept prisoner in the 12th century. Apparently, he succeed in offending the Duke of Austria, Leopold, during a crusade to the Holy Land. When he returned home, his uh, ship had a problem uh, next to the shores of nowadays Croatia, and he couldn't travel anymore back home to England uh, via the sea. So he had to go tower of uh, the Baroque Monastery. Uh, the tower is painted in blue and white. The locals say uh, are the colors of the sky and the heaven. And the rest of the monastery just below is yellow and brown, the colors of the hell. Now, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are up on the sun deck or if you are in the lounge, as soon as we pass the uh, tower of the monastery, turn a little bit to the back and try to get in the picture the village, the tower and the ruins of the castle. And that will be the greatest picture of the Vahau Valley. And the blue sky in the back. So if you are up on the sun deck, now is your chance to get a great picture with the tower in front, the village and the ruins all the way up on top of the hill.
this greenhouse over there, this greenhouse, this was a bathhouse. In former times, there was a real note bus stops in apartments, flats. Only here you could take a full bus in this house, yes. And here also minor injuries were treated. If you have a toothache, you could have your teeth pulled out, yes. And this was a very important information that here you could catch up the village. And this is the uh, only one. This is the current we're docked in Dernstein. And this is the current outside on the Danube River just to show how fast it's flowing. Had a lot of rain here lately and it's rising. The whole facade is decorated with aluminum nails. This is the Post Office Savings Bank and it's one of the typical buildings uh, from the Art Nouveau side. We are driving along one palais after the other. All the rich and noble uh, families, they wanted to have a palais here along the ring in the 19th century. And uh, if you look at these palais, the concert is being transmitted every year on TV. They're transmitting the concert already in more than 80 countries all over the world.
sponsors. Beethoven had several sponsors. They paid him a yearly salary so that he, uh, that he could work where, what, and when he wanted. You know? And Beethoven's third symphony, the Viaroika, was played for the first time in this palace. Nowadays, the palace houses the Austrian Theatre Museum, and if one visits the museum, one can still see the Eroica Hall, where the Eroica was played for the first time. And um, Beethoven had dedicated the Eroica originally to Napoleon. son of Maria Theresia, I've mentioned already, she had 16 children, 11 daughters and 5 sons. This was her second daughter. Then, all the buildings here are belonging to the Hook. I mentioned already. So behind you, we have the entrance to the Augustinian church. <coughs> then, in the middle, we have the former fourth library to the National um, you have seen the library in Milk, right? Yes. Is yes. Uh, exactly the same style. Always. Oh, Our library is fine. without eyebrows. <laughs> Nowadays it's one of the best examples for our depot. Oh. Next corner, unfortunately, one of my favorite cafes just closed Remains from the Romans. <coughs> mm. oh. 
you want to tell me? No. no. Um, in between the first and the fifth century, we had the Romans. Because at that time, the northern border of the Roman Empire was the Danube. The Romans had around the Danube, they had built their cities in order to protect the border. And in the Horna, as Vienna was called under the Romans, was one of those military cities. But the military city was further down. I will show you where it was. Here was already the civil city of the Romans. And these few stones over there, This is Vienna. This is the pedestrian street. Again, this is the pedestrian street in Vienna. Oh, look at the glass art. There's a little bit of Greek, a little bit of Morocco, a little bit of Renaissance. They've just mixed everything together, but that's so typical for that uh, period. In the middle of the garden, we have the plate column. During the centuries, we had many of those black plate epidemics. Every time, thousands of people were dying of it. So uh, during every plate, the emperors always made a vow. There wouldn't be too many people dying if the plate would last too long. They would either have a church or a column built as a thanksgiving, which means we have in Austria many plague churches and many plague columns. <laughs> church, you know, overcharged with gold and ornaments. You have seen the church in there. You know what high baroque means. <laughs> This is St. Peter's Church. It's one of the plague churches. Thank 
This is St. Stephen's in Vienna. Just the two stained glass sections on either side of the altar are original. The rest of them were either destroyed by the Turks or World War II. This is the view of the choir lot. In <coughs> And of course, one of the newer windows. This is like the center of Vienna, the center of the old Vienna city. And the Aida is where we had the Apple Strudel. And this is St. Peter's. Largely refurbished. And uh, in this tower is hanging the largest bell of all. And this bell is only ringing at Christmas, New Year's Eve, and at uh, Easter. Or when Of course, the Hard Rock Cafe, Starbucks, T-Mobile, and McDonald's.
Oh, look at the bakery. Two. You did the last one, yeah. so I'll do this. Okay, one. that's yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. 